Hi everybody. I wanted to show you what, another cool tool. This is an 1830s uh, English plated brace. It's made of beech with brass plating and a lignum um, head on it there. Um, top pad. It uh, is labeled Henry Brown on the top and James B. Sheffield on the chuck here. Uh, my guess is Henry Brown made it. Had some leftover stuff from where he bought out James B. I could be wrong about that, just a guess. Anyway, it's a very cool tool. I don't use it very often. I really just bought it because I wanted to have one. I thought they were so cool looking. This beautiful tool. But uh, you can use it, and I'm going to show you a little bit about that and how um, a couple of things to watch out for on these guys. So hang on, here we go. Okay, first things first on this guy. Um, when you're looking at these, uh, I bought, actually bought this one on eBay and I got lucky because it turned out to be a good one. Um, sometimes these heads can be really wobbly. A little bit of wobble is okay. But if the thing, you know, flops all over the place when you try to turn it, it just won't, it won't be worth anything. Um, this one actually had a pretty significant crack in here. I don't know if you can see that light line right there. I was able to patch it with a little bit of something. I didn't have any lignum. I think that might be walnut. Um, it was the darkest thing I had, but it actually went all the way underneath there. Um, these are beautifully turned heads. Um... The brass pieces here just wear on each other. It's got a wear uh, washer in here. Um, on the chuck, and you can take the chuck off just by taking this screw right here out, and it'll pop off. Um, inside the chuck, and I'm pretty sure you can't see that, but there is a, um, a little hook. Basically, it's a hook that holds a bit. Um, <clears throat> and the hook is on there. It's opposite of the uh, button. So what you do is you want to find a bit that's got a slot cut in it right here like this. You see that slot? And the, the hook catches that slot. So when you slot it in, you put the slot opposite down and pop it in. And you can hear it chuck and it'll hold it in there. Now, <clears throat> that's not to say it won't hold a bit that doesn't have one in it. Um, I've got something like this little tiny auger bit right here. Uh, as long as the taper isn't too large, it will fit in there. Now, having said that... Um, it will pull right back out of there. So if you have this bit in there, um, this one fits in there pretty decent. Some of them will just about fall out. Um, you can take and file a notch in it with uh, maybe a hacksaw and a, a file. I haven't bothered trying that. Um, it seems to hold okay. Even this um, funny looking countersink bit here will go in there and pretty much stay in there. You, you just have to watch it if you're going to use it with one of these when you pick it up. Yeah, you want to grab the bit too, that way it doesn't fall out on you and ruin your, your bit and your sharpening. Um, but again, you know, if you wanted to, you could you could cut notches in it where they needed to go. Um, so, uh, also, you know, you want to make sure this spring is strong. Um, I have seen a blog where a fellow replaced some parts on his, there's a linkage in there. Um, but it's a really fairly simple mechanism uh, that goes together. So um, the other thing I want to say about these guys is because this is, you know, 1830s, so it's almost 200 years old at this point, 180, 90 years old, I would not use this for any real high torque applications. You know, say a one-inch auger bit or something like that is pretty heavy duty. Uh, just because that's putting a lot of stress on a really old tool that, you know, it's, it, I, I love using old tools and I, I try to keep them and preserve them. But if I use this on a monster drill bit like that, it could possibly break some of this wood. Although this one feels really solid, uh, and these platings were intended to help strengthen these uh, braces in the places where they would break most often. You'll see them broken across here, uh, especially the ones that are unplated. So, um, at any rate, let's, uh, let's give it a try a little bit and show you what some of these things work with. Again, these were meant to really to work with things like these center bits here. These are uh, beautiful, beautiful center bits. I love these guys. And the ones that have the notches in the bottom. This one, for some reason, has two notches in it. I don't know if you can see this here, there's a notch right there and a notch right there. Whoever owned this bit before probably had a brace like this and found that, uh oh, the notch that came in this bit doesn't work with mine. Uh, typically the makers would sell bits that go went with these tools and the bits had the notch already filed where it needed to be for those tools and the taper, the right taper for them because the tapers are different in some of these. They're not all the same. You know, this taper is a little different than that one. Um, so typically they would make them differently, uh, make them individually for each each uh, each tool. So, um, but like I said, you can use them without it. You just have to watch out, make sure it doesn't fall out when you take the thing out. Especially like auger bits where it's deep in a hole, grab the bit too when you pull it out. So let's put it to use a little bit and see what happens. Okay, first thing I'm going to use is 
um, try one of these center bits. And this one, like I said, it's got the notches in it, so it'll go in there and stay. Um, so we're going to try this center bit here. I'm going to drill a hole. I had been working on this piece of wood before. Um, the center bit makes beautiful, beautiful shavings. See how fast that works. Something else I want to show you about these center bits. Something I love about these guys. Like this. I'm going down in there. Now this is cherry. And they turn out the most beautiful, beautiful shavings you've ever seen. Look there. Nice little pieces that go inside of each other. I've got a couple other odds and ends. I'm use it with this uh, little tiny auger bit here. Set her up here, pour right on through. Works great. Now, like I said, this auger bit doesn't have the notches. So once you have to pull it off, uh oh, that's why you gotta. You can back them out and then pull it out of there. Here, they're not intended to go with this bit. Just thought I'd this brace. I just thought I'd show you. Uh, this is an Abbott countersink. It's got a patent date of uh, 1871. And originally it would have had some lines across the back to denote how large a head size you've got. And basically what it does, and we can put it in this, like I said, we'll just have to hold on to it. Um, so you got your little hole here, and we're going to sink, countersink it for a screw. You see how it goes around the outside? But it actually works very, very well. There you go. You've got a countersunk hole. And I got one more countersink here we'll look at. This one uh, just says John Wilson and Sheffield. Um, so I'm not sure about that one, but it's got a cool um, different tip on it. It makes a different countersink. So we'll try this one here. And that makes a broader, uh, shallower countersink. So, again, it'll just pop right out of there without that hook to hold the thing. Okay, so again, this is the, the very beautiful Henry Brown uh, slash James B. Uh, bit brace from about 1830. Uh, again, beech, brass, and lignum. Uh, very well inlaid head. Let's see if you can get a look at that. There you go. Um, and then on the, on the chuck there, get a good look at that. So anyway, these are really cool. Not a good, I would say, everyday use just because it is so old and maybe a little more fragile than its iron brothers and sisters, but nonetheless fun, um, cool to use now and again for something different. I love the feel of that wood on my hand. It doesn't rotate, you just have to let it go in your hand. But a uh, beautiful tool. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.